Greetings. We were asked about this word Bantu. So what we want to do is address this terminology Bantu. So we're going to go on the Wikipedia and the Google. We do some research. And first of all, this is important to um, clarify here. Bantu, according to Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, it states that it may refer to one of several things. Bantu languages, the Black Association for Nationalism right here through UNITY um, using B-A-N-T-U as an acronym, a youth activism group in the 60s, the Bantu peoples, which are over 400 uh, types of people. So we see that Bantu can refer to Bantu peoples, Bantu languages, Bantu expression, and Bantu stand. Uh, now, pay attention to this because what's going on right here is other people are defining black people or African people, and African people have not done a good enough job in defining themselves. So here's where we get this terminology, which has been used as a divide and rule terminology because some people, and Dr. Ben did something very good in his book right here, which is show this book right here, this book, um, We the Black Jews, and this book, We the Black Jews, by Dr. Ben um, Johanan, he basically talks about how European scholars have um, introduced their own interpretation of terminologies, you know, classifications and other terminologies, and by doing this, <clears throat> they have successfully divided and um, conquered black people, but he was talking in particular about Ethiopia, what has gone on in Ethiopia among some Ethiopian peoples who they would say are more um, uh, Semitic or Shemitic, which they are, but they will put it within a false whitewash. A whitewash. Now, what we want to do right here is get into this terminology Bantu, because like we said, there's a lot of controversy around Bantu, but most people cannot define what is Bantu, what is the terminology, and ask the question of whether Bantu is really an accurate terminology or it's just a convenient terminology that has been coined and developed by who. So let's go here to um, let's go to click on Bantu languages. All right. Okay, let's back this up. Back this up right here. Okay, I think we're off line for a moment. But we uh, saved it elsewhere. This is a guy, really. This is a guy right here who developed or who coined this terminology. He was uh, Valheim Bleek, a Dutch um, a German linguist, Valheim Bleek, and no higher resolution is available for his picture. Now, he is the one actually that coined uh, this terminology, that coined the terminology uh, right here. We have more about him. Uh, his whole name is Valheim Heinrich Emanuel Bleek. And he lived from 1827 to 1875. He was a German linguist, and he worked in um, Africa. And he developed this terminology, um, Bantu. And here's the story of his life. He worked among, it talks about how he first contacts, made contacts with the Bushmen and Robin Island and Cape Town, South Africa. Now, we already know that the Deutsch or the Germans who went to Africa, by and large, were racist. And they're the ones who stole the land from the people. It's, it's not um, popular to say that, you know, in this kind of uh, new ageism. You understand? But the truth of the matter is that they utilize this false academia or, or, or scholarly you understand, what, what, what they term as academic and scholarship to basically coin terminologies, you understand, for people. Now, it's very interesting how he um, coined this particular terminology here for, um, 
the so-called Bantu people. I think we lost this window right here. But let's just go on to something else, really, that we had found. Now, the, the, this, this is what it's called. It's, it's called uh, taxology. Taxology, definition of taxology, basically is a technique or the technique or science of classification. The scientific, they say, identification, this is the key word right there, naming, naming and classification of living things. And it's also called systemics, systemics. Look at this word, tax, tax, um, taxology, you understand, taxonomy, taxology, taxonomy, you understand, the orderly classification, you understand, classification, naming, systemic, systemic. Now, this has everything to do with this particular individual, um, bring up this picture again, this particular individual who coined the terminology um, Bantu. This uh, Dutch or German, you understand, who was part of that European land grab of South Africa, in order to do it, they had to create language, they had to create ideas that could, once they are taught and they sound very scientific, a pseudoscience or, or, or science falsely so-called, even in the naming and the utilizing of this terminology, of this terminology band. So now here we have this page right here. And let's go to the wiki, the wiki link, Bantu languages. Here we go. Here we go right here. Now, this page, Bantu languages, technically they now call it narrow Bantu. Now, I would suggest that you go and, and you look this up for yourself and you save it because you really have to study it. There's a lot of information in here. But when you start to study it and break it down, this is what we have done, it becomes very um, interesting how arbitrary you understand, and even unilateral in a sense, their definitions, even right here where they talk about the subdivisions, the subdivisions, right? Um, they do name that Central Band to Northwest Band to is very dubious. It's very, in other words, there's a lot of questions. It's not truly a scientific, it's not as scientific as they would try to make it seem to be. In other words, they're calling all of these African languages Bantu language was part of the whole divide and conquer in Africa so that they could take one part of Africa from another set of Africans and then tell other Africans, well, you're not like them because they are Bantu. But there was a terminology used for them before. But let's first um, deal with, um, here, here we go, see that key word right there, classification, classification, right? and according to the Guthrie classification of Bantu languages. So these are Europeans who are claiming scientific license to basically name call other peoples, you understand, in, their, in, in, in the effort of a bigger agenda. In other words, um, David et Impera. So there's a lot of um, verbiage here about what Bantu is, so forth and so on. But let's get to where it actually um, defines, where is it defined? Okay, here it goes right here in the first part of this article, um, Bantu languages. And it's very important because a lot of Ethiopians, a lot of what's going on in the Horn of Africa, um, and a lot of injustices continue because of this false uh, naming and classification. Here it says, remember, the people did not call themselves this. It's, we're going to learn right here that it was Valheim Heinrich Emanuel Bleak, you understand, whom we brought up his picture right here. This is him right here, who basically coined this terminology. He was a Dutch, Deutsche Sprach Wissenschaftler or something like that. He was a German linguist. So now he goes to Africa, he meets with the Bushmen. Right? And here it says the technical term, this should be quote technical term, Bantu, simply meaning people. This is all it means, people, according to them, right? 
was first used was first used by Valheim Heinrich Immanuel Bleek, eighteen twenty seven to eighteen seventy five. As this is reflected in many of the languages of this group. So now it's making an assumption that he first used this, right? He first used this terminology and it's justifying his use of it by trying to say as this is reflected in many of the languages of this group. What is reflected? What is reflected in many languages of the group? So this is what you call circular circular reasoning. This is to give a seeming intellectual and pseudoscience to it, but really there's no science to it. It says technical term banned to simply meaning people. It says it was first used by Valheim Heinrich Emanuel Bleek, 1827-1875, as this is reflected in many of the languages of this group. What is reflected? It says a common characteristic of Bantu languages is that they use words such as Muntu or Mutu for person. Okay? And the plural prefix for human nouns starting with Mu, according to what they've classified as class one, in most languages is Ba class two. What? Class two. Pay attention to what's going on here. What's going to go on here? What they're explaining. Thus giving Bantu. Thus giving what? Bantu for people. D d I mean, did you get that? You might think you got that. You might think it's, it's pretty straightforward, but it's not straightforward. Here's the main thing. It's Europeans defining other people. And, and this was during the height of white supremacy when these terminology, remember the people did not call themselves this. They use the term, one term from their language. It's like if we call Deutsch people or German people, it's supposed to be called German and European languages Volks, Volkssprachen. We call it Volkssprachen. In other words, Volk speak. In other words, their language, is, we're never going to call it German. But let's not call it German or Dutch. But we're going to define them, take one word out their language and call them Volks. Volks, V O L K S. You know, like Volkswagen or Volkswagen. We'll call them Volks. So we're going to call the Europeans or the German Europeans, Germanic Europeans, not Germans anymore. You understand? Or Alemann or Deutsch. We're going to call them Volks. This is like what they did to a whole group of people, you understand, throughout Africa and even dividing and conquering many in East Africa. You understand? Until today, we have. Ethiopian, Somalian, speaking derisively and using this particular word as almost like a N word or a nigger word, you understand, almost as a pejorative word, you understand. So here it says that Bleak and later Karl Meinhof, obviously another Volks, two Volks here, two Volks, you understand, Bleak, who coined this terminology, Bantu. You understand? In other words, he arbitrarily coined a terminology that had no technical or scientific use. This was all a part of the drive of white supremacy to take Africa from the Africans and to use this pseudoscience to divide and conquer them. Now, Bleak and a later colleague named Karl Meinhof, he pursued extensive studies comparing the grammatical structures of Bantu languages. Now they give us this paragraph right here as a way of saying that, well, you see, it's, it's straightforward. It explains itself. It explains nothing. Notice what they did with the class. One is Muntu or Mutu for person, right? Mu, class one. But they chose the Ba from class two. You understand? And so they already put within their own classification, remember, this is not what the so-called Bantu people said of themselves. This is what ones like Valheim, Heinrich, Immanuel Bleek said, you know, saying sometime between um, 1827 and 1875. He said this, and then one of his colleagues, another Volks, you know, saying, or Deutsch or German, but we don't want to call them Deutsch or German. We want to call them Volks because we're going to take a word from their language and then define them by this word and then just put other Europeans into that same classification. This is, will be our 
taxonomy, you understand, our taxological um, construction or reconstruction, but just to understand how important it is, you know, to define, you understand, how important it is to define yourself as well as define others. In fact, this actually comes from the very first chapters of the Bible to show how important this is, and most people have probably read this before, but don't understand the significance, the significance of it. Um, now, here is how they divided and conquered this land that belonged to all these people. These people owned this land. They did not have these sort of artificial borders, but the Europeans came from the north to the south along with their linguists and missionaries and others, and then created terminologies like Bantu, and unfortunately, many of these people, because of white supremacy, domination, and domination of the Gentiles, have been forced to call themselves and have assumed that, okay, well, we're Bantu people. I'm uh, East Bantu, West Bantu, Central Bantu, sub this, sub that, you know, all these type of terminologies that Europeans have come from out of nowhere, you know, out of Europe, into Africa to snatch and grab the land, but the key thing that they did, and the key thing they did was develop this pseudoscience. You understand to say, well, these people all speak a different language, but it's somewhat similar, but it's somewhat different, and these Africans are different from other Africans. Now, this is not to say that there are not some things that we can learn. Of course, we can learn from some some of the extensive studies, but the fact that they came and took a portion, like, it, like it's going to show even in other areas of this article, they took some words, you understand, or parts of words out of the language of these tribes, and each of these tribes are different tribes, you understand, are different peoples. But what they wanted to do was give a collective nomenclature, a collective name to these people, you understand, in order to do what they basically did, and as we look at this map, to basically divide and conquer them. Notice what they say. They say down here there was one particular type of language, you understand, because they don't want the people to think that the land has been taken from all of them, so they divide and conquer them, and then they make up this pseudoscience, you understand, for their own uh, uh, taxonomical purposes. Now, there was an interesting article that we found. Uh, actually, it was, in a, it, was a, it was a book. Let's see if we can bring this up and show it to you. Um, it was in a particular book. Um, right here, the grammar of Benga Bantu, the grammar of Benga Bantu, right there, right? So let's click on this tab right here. And it's a, it's a free book, so you can check it out for yourself. But we thought this was interesting as it was written in, the, I think, 1800s and around the same time as um, the Bantu terminology creator, um, Valheim Bleak. And here it says in section three, I think on page six of this particular book, it's speaking about the Bantu or the Kafir family. The Bantu or Kafir family. Remember, all of these are names that other peoples have imposed on the people. I mean, they know who the people call themselves, but for their own purposes of divide and conquer, classification, and white supremacy, they have developed these terminologies. Now, these two terminologies go together, Bantu or Kafir. It's the so-called Arabs, you understand, or the Ottoman Turks, Mohammedan, and, and their allies, you understand, their pseudo-Semitic allies, who basically have labeled the people Kafir. Kafir, like that famous book, Kafir Boy. But here it says in section 3, it says, the Bantu or Kafir family says it occupies a wide domain roughly comprising the whole of the southeast of the continent, reaching southwards to the neighborhood of the Cape and northwards a little beyond the equator, and northwards a little beyond the equator, where it meets, 
notice this right here, where it meets the Ethiopian group, the Ethiopian group of the Hamitic family, the Ethiopian group of the Hamitic family, implying that there's an Ethiopian